there's a famous quote that is attributed to Richard Feynman that says that philosophy of science is about as useful to science as ornithology is to birds. Obviously saying that um, philosophy of science is a completely futile enterprise and um, every penny you put into it is basically a waste of money. There's a lot wrong with that quote. Uh, <laughs> Well, let me first say what philosophy of science is. I mean, philosophy of science is the application of this philosophical attitude to science, just like moral philosophy is the application of this critical attitude to morality. So philosophy of science just asks questions about science and tries to critically reflect on various aspects of science and then come to a deeper understanding of what science is and what kind of knowledge it provides us with and what role science plays in a society. Um, of course science produces practical spin-offs, to put it this way, but still you shouldn't reduce science to engineering. Um, science does more than that. Uh, and that's where the questions begin. If there is one successful science, then it's physics. I mean, physics has been tremendously successful at going about its business. Yet philosophy isn't superfluous there. Philosophical questions just change. The founding father of quantum mechanics, most notably Planck, Einstein, Bohr, Heisenberg, Schrödinger, again, to mention just a few, they were unashamedly philosophical and a lot of the debates they had they were actually about philosophical questions or philosophical questions broadly construed. I mean Einstein became famous for standing up there saying no God doesn't play dice. That's not a physical theorem so that is clearly a philosophical view that he voiced but that was very important to, for his approach to physics. I mean, Einstein would have done physics very differently had he held a different view about the issue of determinism and probability. And people who did hold different views, like Niels Bohr, say, or, or Heisenberg, they did science differently. So they, they really went different paths later on. So your philosophical convictions do matter to how you do science and this becomes very very visible when you look at the history of physics. And again the metaphor of the birds and the ornithologists is simply wrong if you want to take a metaphor from the animal kingdom what would be much more appropriate is to say well scientists and philosophers they live together in the same ecosystem and they live in a symbiotic relationship and they can't really live without each other. The problem is with language here. We have these two labels. We have scientists and philosophers of science, which suggests that this is sort of clearly separable. I guess what I just said aims to establish that this is sort of the wrong way of thinking about it. We are fooled by ordinary language into believing that you can sort out these two clearly. Well, I guess what I want to say is that Every scientist is to some extent also a philosopher in the sense that what they do has philosophical implication, is, is implicitly based on a particular philosophy, etc., etc. I mean, many scientists may not reflect on that, and these are then sort of the pure scientists, if you want. But many scientists, especially some of the fundamental sciences, they are very philosophically aware, they're very self-conscious, they spend a lot of their time actually thinking about conceptual questions, and in a sense they're half philosophers. So it's a gradual scale, so you can say here you have pure applied sciences, people who do the number crunching and solving the equations and never worry about anything conceptually. Here you have the pure philosophers, so and if you want, they mark the extreme ends of a continuum because there is everything in between. Uh, now, where, where do you draw the line? In the middle, after two thirds, after one third? No one knows. It's just a meaningless question. Whenever you have a continuum, 
you can't really draw a sharp line and map it onto a binary distinction. And that's exactly what this ornithology charge does, and that's what I think should be resisted. I think philosophy has to be developed in very close contact with the sciences, and as science moves on, philosophical questions change. I mean, philosophical questions that arise in connection with Newtonian physics are completely different from philosophical questions that arise in connections with um, quantum field theory. And I don't think there is sort of a definitive philosophy, sort of the 27 rules of how to do science that one can hand down in the first year to science students, say, here is the Bible, now abide by the rules. Um, that is a bad idea. There is no such finished canon, and philosophers have to pay attention to what scientists do, keep up, change their views, and vice versa. Scientists should pay attention to what philosophers have to say about what they do. I really think these fields have to progress, I mean, tandem, as it were. So they have to move together and they have to talk to each other, and that is really the way forward. We just started a project here at the LSE that brings together philosophy and climate physicists. It turns out that constructing climate models is very, very difficult, not only from a, from a purely mathematical or physics point of view, but also from a conceptual point of view. The use of probability, the kinds of forecasts you make, the way you test or you fail to test these models, etc., etc., they raise a host of conceptual problems. And so we started a project where the climate scientists in the school and some of the philosophers of science in the school actually work together and try to come up with a, a, a more informed way of constructing climate models. And that's exactly what I think philosophers of science should do. They should go out, they should talk to physicists, they should make their hands dirty, they should try to understand what the scientists do and then feed back into the scientific practice and help scientists to, uh, to do in a more informed way what they want to do, namely construct good series and models.